One year ago tomorrow, one year ago tomorrow, a violent mob uh, attacked our capital, this capital. Five Americans died, hundreds sustained injuries in what has been described as the worst attack on our capital since the War of 1812, and the worst attack on our democracy since, literally since the Civil War. The mob assaulted and maimed police officers, desecrated our beacon of democracy, and using force, using force sought to obstruct the peaceful transfer of power in this nation. One year later, as we recall the chaos and the bloodshed of that day, more than ever, I'm convinced that we must fully understand what happened and make sure that it never happens again. The 2020 election was hard fought, but it was not especially close. Not one example of widespread fraud was found, nor was any evidence presented that would have altered the outcome. Let's take a moment and look at the facts. There were 81.2 million votes for Joe Biden last year, 81.2 million. There were 74.2 million votes cast for Donald Trump, 74.2. That's about 51.3% uh, of the vote for Joe Biden, 46.8% of the vote for Donald Trump. 306 electoral votes for Joe Biden, 232 electoral votes for Donald Trump. Ironically, Joe Biden earned the same amount, same number of electoral college votes as Donald Trump did in uh, 2016. Why is that relevant? Well, in 2016, Donald Trump declared that his, 200, his uh, 230 electoral votes was a, uh, no, his 306 electoral votes, his 306. He got the same number of votes. Joe Biden got the same number of votes in uh, 2020 as uh, Donald Trump did in 2016. When Trump won by, with 300 and, and uh, six votes, he said, well, it was a landslide. When Biden wins by uh, uh, the same number of electoral votes, uh, Donald Trump says, no, it's not a landslide, it's a, a theft, you've stolen the election. Well, despite these facts, Donald Trump pressed ahead with legal challenges in several states. Many of these claims were downright bizarre and many were unfounded. Madam President, more than 60 federal and state courts involving more than 90 judges, many of whom were nominated by Republican presidents, including Donald Trump, and they all agreed. No evidence of widespread fraud, wrongdoing, or other irregularities were uncovered subsequent to the 2020 election. None. Allow me to quote one of them, Judge Bebas, a longtime member of the conservative Federalist Society whom Donald Trump... Donald Trump's baseless claims of fraud in Pennsylvania, Judge Beavis said, and, and I quote him, he said, calling an election unfair does not make it so. Let me repeat that. Calling an election unfair does not make it so. Rather than accept a defeat at the ballot box and in the courtroom, the former president embraced conspiracy theories and, and outright lies. January 6th insurrection occurred because these lies let me repeat, lies, were a call to action for white supremacists and other domestic extremists. As someone who grew up in uh, Danville, Virginia, the last capital of the Confederacy, I've seen Confederate flags before, a lot of them, but I never expected to see any of them in this capital or in this chamber. On January 6th, the former president incited a mob at the National Mall, and he sent them to attack this capital. He lit a match. Feigned the, uh, the flames of uh, violence and did nothing to extinguish, extinguish the fire. He was deservedly impeached for the second time for this heinous offense against our Constitution, which he was sworn to defend. One year later, I'm standing in this sacred chamber thanks in large part to the heroism of countless officers from the U.S. Capitol Police and the D.C. Metropolitan Police Departments. Over 150 police officers were injured that day. Over 150. Tragically, five police officers have subsequently lost their lives in connection 
to the January 6th attack, including tragically four by suicide. One of the officers who defended our Capitol will carry the wounds of that day, both physical and mental, with them for years to come. In response, we must remain committed to their health and safety for years to come. They showed remarkable courage that day. They risked their lives, an unyielding commitment to the oath that they took to protect our Constitution and this Capitol. One of those officers was Officer Eugene Goodman. Officer Goodman is a U.S. Army veteran who was ra raised right here, right here in the District of Columbia, not far from where we're gathered. He saw combat in the Iraq War, fighting with the 101st Airborne Division, until he returned home and signed up to serve with the Capitol Police in 2009. He'd shown valor in uniform previously. That was in a war zone. And I'm certain that Officer Goodman never imagined that he would be called on to fight a battle to defend our Constitution in the U.S. Capitol, not far from his own backyard. Just outside these doors, Officer Goodman distracted the mob and helped to save 100 United States senators and many of our staff members from harm, as well as members of the House of Representatives and their staff, too. The brave men and women of law enforcement, like Officer Goodman, put their lives on the line that day to protect not just the members of Congress inside the House and Senate chambers, but our very Constitution. Ultimately, the insurrectionists and the former president failed to overturn the election because Democrats, Republicans, and Republican Vice President Michael Pence returned to the House and Senate chambers, and after order was restored, restored we did not accept mob rule. Instead, we certified the votes of millions of Americans because that's what our democracy and our allegiance to it demanded of us. We've learned a lot over the past year that puts that day into better context. There's still much to learn. But January 6th was a far from a random event. It was a premeditated, coordinated, and in the end, violent effort to overturn an election. In other countries, we would call this an attempted coup. One year later, I'm alarmed and appalled by the attempts to rewrite the history of January 6th as a peaceful protest. These conspiracy theories and lies continue to fuel the same misinformation and hatred that led to January 6th. Well, colleagues, we need to lead by our example. We must choose truth over the big lie. We must choose the Constitution over the mob, and we must choose the rule of law and mutual respect for one another over hatred and division. Thomas Jefferson once said, it's just a paraphrase, but something like, uh, something along these lines, he said, if the people know the truth, they won't make a mistake. I love that. If the people know the truth, they won't make a mistake. Well, we returned that day to this very chamber to certify the votes of millions of Americans because we wanted the American people to know the truth. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris won the 2020 election fair and square. We must now make sure that every American knows the unvarnished truth related to January 6th. Over the past several years, I've mentioned time and again the wisdom of our framers of our Constitution. In the hot summer of 1787, they gathered and debated a new form of government, a constitutional republic, with an intricate system of checks and balances. Little did they know, but that document, first ratified by Delaware, would become the longest-running experiment in democracy that the world has ever known. I have sworn an oath uh, no fewer than 12 times to protect the constitution of our country. First as a 17-year-old Navy ROTC midshipman at Ohio State. Four years later, when I was commissioned as an ensign in the Navy to become a naval flight officer during the Vietnam War, again, as I, as I relinquished my regular commission and assumed a reserve commission, and then another, gosh, eight, eight times as a House member and here as a senator. We have a sacred obligation to protect our Constitution from enemies, both foreign and domestic. Madam President, in his second inaugural address, 
the end of the, uh, the Civil War, President Lincoln addressed a deeply divided nation. All told, more than 600,000 Americans would die in the bloodiest conflict in our nation's history. Still, President Lincoln called on the nation to come together, to bind up our wounds, and to begin to heal. I believe that these words, which are etched inside the Lincoln Memorial, just a few miles from where we're gathered today, can guide our nation in this moment. Colleagues, in order to truly bind up our wounds related to January 6th and heal a deeply divided nation, we must continue seeking the truth and holding those responsible to account. More than 700 individuals have already been charged with crimes related to the attack on our Capitol. Moreover, the bipartisan House Select Committee must finish its important work that it's begun and provide us with the facts of that day and the days that preceded it. Armed with those facts, many of us who served in this Congress must make sure that the American people know the truth, and that everyone, everyone responsible for the plotting, for the planning, for the execution of attempt to overturn an election in the United States of Amer America is held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. Our democracy demands no less. Thank you, Madam President. I yield uh, the floor at this time. Thank you.